This is probably the best £20 or $30 you can spend right now. Aye. Subscribe. It's the official release of the Trap Trick Structure Deck, and this thing is just incredible. I would personally say it's even better than the branded Structure Deck overall. Let me know if you agree down below, I know that's a bit controversial. Of course, we're going to start by quickly opening and skimming through the contents before showing you how to mash three together and play the deck. It's pretty self-explanatory when you're playing a lot of traps, but we'll see what we can show you. Either way, both budget players and trap tricks players are eating good today. And on that note, you could also be eating good because today's episode is sponsored by Factor. The way things are going right now, everything is so expensive. Her cat food's gone up in price like twice in the last month, man. It's crazy. You know what I told my vet the other day? It's like $10 for eggs in America. I don't even live in America. So, it's a perfect time for me to cut us a deal on some good eating. Factor is a meal prep service that delivers nutritious meals to your door so you have all the convenience of takeout without the guilt that comes with it. You're not even locked into ordering the same large double bacon cheeseburger meal with Fanta over and over again. There's a rotating weekly menu with a bunch of different options and goodies to choose from. And best of all, for those peasants who don't own a dishwasher like me, there's barely any cleanup involved after since it's all pre-prepared. So you're saving time and money. If you use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGCARDSFEB50, you'll get 50% off your first box. And then once you sign up, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Definitely give it a go, see if you fancy it, and thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this episode. Of course, we already have our first look and opening of the structure deck on the channel, but as always with these kind of three structure deck videos, we open this real quickly, go through the contents and speak about, you know, what's good and what's not so good for the structure deck. Matt. And into the cardboard we go. So Trap Tricks Pudica is a normal summon. Search the new field spell, which gives you an additional normal summon. Not a bad play starter if you have other Trap Tricks monsters in your hand. But when this is special summoned, it banishes a monster on your opponent's field until the next standby phase. And then you special summon it back specifically so that you can trigger your trap cards. So that's why it special summons it back rather than just temporarily banishing it. Uh, not a bad card, not a bad card, but definitely not the best normal summon in the deck. Uh, trap Trick Guarding, like I said, this is the field spell. You don't really need three of these, probably uh, one or two to be fair. We have Trap Tantalizing Tune, the draw two. Pinguicula, this is like the beefiest Trap Tricks extra deck monster outside of the Link 3, which buffs everything. Uh, but the search is for a Trap Tricks monster. You can search for the uh, this thing, which is an extender, which is pretty cool. Now we have the Link 3, which is crazy good for OTKing your opponent. Uh, every Trap Tricks monster you control gains a thousand attack while you have a normal trap in the graveyard. So if you're able to control the game with your turn one board and then get all your trap tricks out on turn two, you have game. <laughs> we got the extender, Arachnocampa. This also has some built-in protection for your back row, which is really nice. Of course, super rare, evenly matched, incredible inclusion. Holy Utea is actually a really nice combo piece in this deck. Uh, it's sort of like Shade Brigandine, but it requires a discard of the normal trap. Thing is, you can set this with things like Sarah and then activate it on turn one, the turn it's set, to help you further your plays. And then whatever you do discard for this, you can just set back with the Dianea you special summon off of Sarah. But I'll show you that later. We have Atrex, not really worth it to be honest. We have Mermelio, great normal summon as always, three of these. Nepenthes, you probably play one of these to summon off of Sarah and then get a search for a Trap Tricks monster for your follow-up turn two. Diana, always summoning this on turn one, uh, assuming you're going through the whole Yute line. So you can just set whatever you discard and play from there, which is really nice. Genlysia, some of these monsters you can experiment with, but I have opted to not touch Genlysia at all, or Vesicula to be fair. Kaiju's obviously side deck, Retaliating C, this is kind of like a one-sided dimension shifter, but only in response to an opponent's spell that special summons monsters. So for example, if your opponent activates Branded Fusion, you can special summon this to your field, and then your opponent is under a one-sided macrocosmos. So probably a side deck card, which is really nice. Insect, don't really care. Lone Fire, I was considering this going second to like special summon out the, the Ultra, the, the Banishes, but honestly, there's better options. Not worth wasting your normal summon on that one. You can just see Raigeki. Uh, Ash Blossom, incredible. Rose Lover, sure. Sarge de Flora, you can experiment with this going second, but I don't think it's worth getting rid of your own monsters. We have the Mech Knights, love these. Uh, allows you to push for damage, but we're not going to be playing these in the deck. There's just, there's just no point to it, to be fair. Moral Attack, Fire Hand, and yeah, we don't play any of those. Regeki, super nice. We want to main deck this. A lot of people will probably opt to main deck evenly instead, but going first, Regeki is a lot more live than evenly is. Uh, 
and 50% uh, of the time you're going to be going first anyway, so I think Raigeki is a better main deck inclusion than Evenly. Duster, I mean, it's such a good card, might as well main this as well. Then we have all of the whole cards. This is a new one, you can banish an additional monster from the grave as well after, you know, trap holding your opponent. So that can come up, we'll definitely at least play one of those for those kind of decks that we come up against. Trap Hole, the original from LOE. Bottomless, we get two Bottomless, Void Trap Hole. Trap Hole Nightmare, Floodgate Trap Hole, Grave Diggers Trap Hole, Trap Trick, Shade Brigadeen, also really nice in this deck, Sanctum, not really worth it without Scythe, and Sacred Tree. I mean, I get why it's in here, but we're not going to be playing that. Then all of the extra deck monsters. We have 15 spaces in the extra deck. We can play all of these. Uh, and then we have Mantis, which is also one of the best normal summons in the deck. For some reason, just at the back of the structure deck. I really don't know why they did that. So let's go mash three of these together, and I will show you what the deck list looks like because it plays so nicely. Uh, for three structure decks, it's so good, dude. It's so nice. All right, getting into the deck list. Here we go. There's some ratios that you can sort of tweak, but uh, otherwise, I think it's pretty standard how you would build this. So starting off with the monsters, we, of course, have all our normal summons. Triple Trap Tricks Mermelio. Triple Trap Tricks Mantis. Mermelio searches a whole normal trap. Mantis searches another Trap Tricks monster. And then we also have three Pudica as well to search for the field spell. I'm playing three of these and two of the field spells, so that gives us five sort of field spells in total, meaning the most optimal ratio for seeing at least one field spell in our opening hand. You don't want to go overboard with it because too many field spells doesn't really do anything for the deck. It's not like it searches on activation or anything. So you just sort of want to get to it on your first turn to play with and then, you know, the rest you don't really need. So you can cut this down to two and the field spell down to one if you want to, but uh, I want to play five in total for our best chance of seeing at least one in our opening hand. So three, 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 and then we're also playing three Trap Tricks Arachnocampa, this is the extender, also the additional protection for the back row is really nice as well because like if you go into the Link 2, Trap Tricks Calaria, you can just special this back in the end phase to get that additional protection on your back row, which is really nice. Of course, 3 Ash Blossom, incredible this format dude, all the staples in this deck are really nice this format, Ash, very good, evenly, incredible in the side deck, it's so nice, and then rounding off the monsters we also have 1, Trap Tricks Dianette, this is like a combo piece, you special this off of Sarah, and then you can set any trap from your graveyard. And we also have Nepenthes to also summon off of Sarah to get a search when you activate a trap. And uh, it gives you some follow-up for turn two or three, technically. But those are all of the monsters in the deck. Of course, it is a trap deck, so you want to make some room for as many traps as you can. Getting into the spells, we have a triple trap tantalizing tune this is good for consistency you know draw two is always good discarding like an additional card that you don't really need just any normal trap you can discard like a shade brigandine draw into some starters you don't need these because awkward hands do exist where you don't really want to activate this so you can swap these out for like more traps i guess but three trap tantalizing tune three raigeki over evenly because 50 percent of the time you know coin flip I guess dice roll as well, you will be going first. Regeki's better going first than Evenly is. So for turn three especially, you can just nuke your opponent's board and then OTK them with the Trap Tricks Link 3. Like I said, we have two Trap Trip Guard in the field spell and one Feather Duster in the main, because why not? You can always side this out, I suppose. Or you can even just side the Duster and play another trap. For the traps, we have Triple Trap Tricks Holyute. Or whole UT. How do you say that? Please tell me how you say that. Uh, it's essentially an extender to Shade Brigadine. Like I said, with a 5 ratio, it's the optimal ratio for seeing at least one of those cards in your opening hand. So we do want to see one of these at least. But yeah, whole UT is so good for the deck. Triggering Sarah, summoning Dianea, setting back what you discard, making a rank for it. It's so good. Reflesia, you know. <laughs> Double Trap Hole Nightmare, this is sort of like a Solemn Strike. Double Bottomless, you know, destroy a summon and banish it. Double Floodgate Trap Hole, permanently flip the monsters face down. Double Grave Diggers Trap Hole, stops hand traps through things like Reflesia and whatnot. Also just good against like graveyard decks and things like that. And then one of the new trap card, Terrifying Trap Hole Nightmare. I feel like this is a bit more situational. Uh, than the other ones, so it will come up occasionally. That's why we're playing one. You can just set it off, sort of like Sarah or whatever when you need it. But that does round up our 40 card main deck there. Getting into the extra deck, I don't think is anything too revolutionary here. Triple Sarah, of course. Triple Reflesia. Triple Cularia. And then double Alamaris. Alamaris summons from Grave. Double Pinguicula. Search a Traptrix monster. And then double Atopis. Sort of like a Dark Ruler No More, also gives all your monsters plus 1,000, incredible. So nice for the deck. And then, side deck here, we have, of course, the triple evenly matched, 
triple retaliating C, because why not? It's a hand trap, one-sided macrocosmos against decks that do special using spells like Branded, for example. Kaijus, obviously, uh, against Towers, things like Dragoon, which is making a splash of this format. And then we have our third copy, each of what I believe to be the best traps in the deck. For going first, you side out Regeki when you're siding for going first. And that is our 15 card side deck. So overall, pretty solid deck. I will show you some, I guess, test hands or like a combo or whatnot. All right, so the game plan, go first and set up as many interruptions as possible. Uh, through things like Reflesia, all your trap cards, Sarah, and the first combo we're going to show you here is Trap Tricks Mermelio plus any normal trap. It doesn't really matter which one it is, but you'll see why it matters here. So starting with the Mermelio, we're going to normal summon and search any whole normal trap card from the deck. So we are going to search for a copy of the new Trap Tricks Whole Ute super rare. From here, we are then going to link our Mermelio into Trap Tricks Sarah. Kind of off the camera there, off the screen there. Trap Trick Sarah, we're then going to set the trap that we searched, activate it by discarding a normal trap to the graveyard, special summons itself. On resolution, Sarah will trigger because a normal trap card was activated. We're gonna special summon a Trap Tricks monster from the deck. We're going to special summon Dianea, of course. On resolution, Dianea will activate because she was special summoned. We're gonna set back a normal trap from our graveyard. Gravedigger's Trap Hole, or, you know, just the normal trap that we did send to the grave for Holyute. If you don't activate this by the end of your next end phase, it does get banished, but, you know, most likely you're going to activate it. Otherwise, why are you playing the card? <laughs> I guess your opponent could brick and you don't need it, but who knows. On resolution of that, though, Sarah is once again going to activate because this time a Trap Tricks monster activated its effect, so we can set a whole trap card from the deck, I guess just go Trap Hole Nightmare, Solemn Strike, basically, and then we can overlay these two into Best Girl Trap Tricks Reflesia, giving us a total of three interruptions off of the Mermelio plus any trap. And if you have like, that was two cards in hand. If you have three other traps in hand, that's a lot of interruptions actually. But then playing with this on your opponent's turn, obviously you're gonna interrupt them with Reflesia, discarding Holyute, which would trigger Sarah, get you another trap, Activating one of these traps is going to get you a special summon, so you would probably special summon the Panthes, so that when you go on to activate another one of your traps, you can get a search for a Trap Tricks monster on the follow-up turn 3 OTK. And with Holy Tate, you can banish this from your graveyard to special summon from your graveyard, something like Mermelio, pop a spell or trap, or you can uh, special summon Pudica? Pudica? I forget his name. Pudica. Yeah, you can special summon the Pudica with the Holy Tate from Grave. Uh, to banish an opponent's monster until the next standby phase. That's the gist of things. Like, I'm showing you that combo, there's not really much else I need to show you because all the lines kind of go that same sort of way. But we'll get a different combination of cards here and show you how that goes as well. All right, let's now try with a Pudica and a Trap Tricks Mantis. So starting off, we're going to, of course, normal summon the Pudica. Activate the effect, search for the field spell, Trap Trip Garden. The nice thing about the field spell is that it stops your opponent from just like summoning and attacking over Sarah because the first time it would die, it doesn't die. <laughs> so uh, that's another nice effect on the field spell. Activate the field spell, additional normal summon, normal summon the Mantis, effect to search a Trap Tricks monster. Uh, only one worth searching here that we can use this turn is the Arachnocampa because it is an extender, can special summon itself. We then link the Pudica into Sarah, of course. Always going to be summoning Sarah on turn one. Uh, activate Arachno Camp with the special summon because you control a Trap Tricks monster. On resolution, Sarah will activate to set a trap from the deck. So I guess once again, we'll just go Trap Hole Nightmare here. You can go bottomless, like... It's situational, it depends on the deck that you're against specifically. You could alternatively go for the Holyute here to get an additional extender onto the board, but that sort of loses your interruptions in the back row. So here we just want to grab an interruption from the deck, and then with these two, once again, go Reflesia, which is less interruptions this time, but hey, it still works. All right, now let's just do a quick little test hand and see what we can do with that. See if we get anything juicy, anything spicy. All right, so a quick little example hand here, drawing five for turn. We see Trap Hole Nightmare, Mantis, Pudica, Ash Blossom and Trap Tricks Hall Ute. Very nice, very nice indeed. So, with this, we're going to Normal Summon Pudica, activate effect, search for the field spell, Trap Trick Garden to the hand, then activate the Trap Trip Garden, giving us an additional Normal Summon. We'll link the Pudica into the Trap Tricks 
Sarah there on camera, ideally. Normal summon the Traptrix Mantis for the additional normal summon on the garden. Effect to search a Traptrix monster. Search Arachnocampa there. On resolution, we're going to trigger the Sarah. Set a trap from the deck. So let's just go bottomless, I suppose. Why not? From here, we will set the whole Ute and then activate the whole Ute, discarding the Trap Hole Nightmare from the hand. Special summoning this. Triggering Sarah on resolution to special from the deck, our girl, Dianea. Dianea is going to set back the Trap Hole Nightmare here. We're then going to overlay the Mantis and the Dianea for Trap Tricks Rafflesia, an additional interruption or technically two interruptions if she does survive. And then we can special summon the Arachnocampa. Link the Hoyite and Arachnocampa into Trap Tricks Galeria, the Link 2, which is going to reset your traps after you use them, giving you double usage out of your traps. Then in the end phase, Calaria is going to summon back the Arachnocampa. So with this hand, we have four interruptions, Rafflesia, two traps, and Ash Blossom, but we gain so much advantage. The back row has protection with Arachnocampa, our monsters have protection with Trap Trick Garden, our traps get reset, and we're gonna be triggering Sarah for days off the Rafflesia and the traps. So the deck plays really, really nicely for three structure decks and can very easily compete at a local level for sure. I mean, you just need to add things like Parallel Exceeds, you know, a few rank fours, maybe like Utopia Double, and you're golden. This deck is so cool. It's absolutely worth buying, especially if you're just getting back into the game because traps sort of aren't that difficult to play, at least at a casual level. But yeah, three Trap Trick Structure decks. If you have any questions or recommendations for improving the deck, blah, 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 let us know in the comments. Otherwise, Hope you enjoy picking up the three structure decks and playing with them. You can't go wrong. Another structure deck down, and uh, they just keep getting better. Konami, doing a great job on the structure decks. So thanks for watching, and if it is just the structure deck videos you watch on this channel, I'll see you in three months.